The current behaviour we're seeing from the Thargoids may be signifying one of the largest changes and shifts in the balance of power that the galaxy of Elite Dangerous has ever seen. In this video I'll bring you up to speed on what's happened and what it could all mean. If you find this stuff useful we'd love it if you clicked like and subscribe and remember to select all notifications to see all our future Elite Dangerous content and to directly support this channel you can also join our Patreon. Everything you'll need is linked below. Before we get into it as things are moving pretty fast at the moment here's a quick summary of the situation as things stand. At the end of August, just 2 weeks ago as I speak these words, commanders began tracking a highly luminescent spiral shaped anomaly in deep space, roughly in the vicinity of Barnard's Loop. The anomaly later became known as the Unknown Interstellar Anomaly or UIA, also referred to more colloquially as the Stargoid. Ahead of the Stargoids approach there are increased incidents of hyperdictions. This in fact is how the Stargoid was first brought to the attention of the wider community as hyperdictions began occurring where there normally wouldn't be any. In the wake of the Stargoid there are signal sources around multiple destroyed vessels that contain survey caches. The caches themselves appear to have no value or use as at the time of recording. As we were rendering our regular Friday news broadcast last week we began to receive reports that more anomalies may have been detected heading toward the bubble. As the flurry of incoming reports began to resolve it was clarified that just one further Stargoid had, at that time at least, been detected and was being tracked by commanders. Around this time it was also noted that in the vicinity of the Stargoids there are also anomalous signal sources in supercruise called rogue signals. When you approach the signals they have an appearance of a green gas cloud similar to those seen around ships and installations that have been attacked by the Thargoids. However when the signal is dropped into it is empty. As the community was still reeling from the revelation that two of the mysterious UIAs were headed toward the bubble a third candidate signal was detected and later confirmed to be indeed from another incoming Stargoid. At the time of recording there are now three of the mysterious interstellar anomalies headed into human occupied space. Canon Research has an anomaly tracking page with a viewable 3D map that shows the current position of the three anomalies and any hyperdiction events around them. You'll find that linked below. As Monday rolled around a further surprise arrived. Three systems in the bubble were very suddenly invaded by Thargoid vessels with AX conflict zones in the affected systems springing up. In a further surprise, three community goals to support the repulsion of the invasions also sprung up. Just to underline those events, that's a move made by the Thargoids and three new community goals going active on a Monday, something that would normally only happen with the Thargs Day Thursday server tick. It's not completely unheard of but it's certainly very unusual. In a further twist on what had been a familiar format none of the starports in the systems have been attacked and set ablaze which is something we would normally expect to see with a regular Thargoid assault. The accompanying Galnet news item that appeared heralding the invasions spoke of them being quote ...an apparently coordinated attack unquote. An unusual turn of phrase particularly when talking about all things Thargoid. As if to further underscore the unusual nature of such a coordinated attack the official Elite Dangerous Twitter account tweeted about the attacks and again used the word coordinated. And Frontier's principal community manager Arthur Tolmy then retweeted the post but, and this is key, he retweeted it with nothing else except the word coordinated along with one of his signature Emperor Palpatine gifts that he's become well known for on Twitter. The fact that the attacks are being branded as coordinated is extremely important for a number of reasons. It goes without saying that the Proteus event that signalled the start of the aftermath period of the ongoing narrative was a benchmark moment but one of the more significant events around the Proteus incident was the change in behaviour that we saw in the Thargoids that are still present in the system. Following the culmination of events in HIP 22460 the Thargoids in and around that system are now immediately aggressive when encountered. 
This is typically not something we've seen in Thargoid behaviour before and perhaps more importantly they are now choosing to hold on to the system. Frontier themselves even saying that the system had fallen to the Thargoids. It seems unlikely to me that what we're seeing from the Thargoids currently is simply anger at our actions followed by resultant retribution. We've made them angry before but they never reacted as they are currently. So is there perhaps something more going on here? Whilst the obvious answer would be to ask the Thargoids themselves what's happening it seems unlikely that we'd ever be able to elicit a response from them. The Guardians, a far more enlightened and advanced civilization, tried communication with our insectoid interstellar neighbours millennia ago and even they were unable to garner the merest hint of a peep from them. The in-game codex has much to say on the subject of Thargoid communication. It goes as far as postulating that what we describe as a Thargoid currently is perhaps something more akin to a drone bee dispatched from a hive, taking something similar to telepathic instruction from a far more intelligent but remote queen Thargoid. Even were we able to communicate face to face with a Thargoid it strikes me personally as unlikely that we'd find anything close to a common understanding or even a desire to communicate within them. Attempting communication with a Thargoid Queen would seem a fool's errand. You could no more commune with a Thargoid Queen than you could communicate the finer points of quantum theory to an angry wasp. Given the circumstances that gave rise to their appearance and the changes in behaviour however I do wonder if what we're seeing emerging from HIP 22460 and indeed approaching us from Barnard's loop is no ordinary Thargoid. Caleb Witchley, Salvation, explored many avenues when investigating Thargoid physiology and technology. One such avenue was the merging of humans with Thargoid ships. The tests did demonstrate some successes and of the human test subjects that survived the traumatic procedures necessary for the merging one in particular, a female known only as Subject D2 is of particular interest. We know that D2 was smuggled out of the test facility where she was being held and had sworn to get her revenge on Caleb Witchley for his experiments on her. If Thargoid vessels are indeed mindless drones receiving instructions from afar does it not follow that were a sentient being instead successfully plugged into that same mechanism they themselves may be capable of communication with the Queen issuing instructions. If not communicating with a Queen Thargoid themselves could they perhaps at least command a Queen drones assets and bend them to their own will. It was pointed out in a recent Galnet article that all the while the Thargoids were gathering in HIP 22460 in response to the Guardian technology that was being gathered there they did not once attack the Proteus site itself. The very central focus of that gathering of Guardian material was left alone. The article further speculating that the Thargoids or dare I say whomever was controlling them may have wanted the weapon to fire. If Salvation was indeed killed in HIP 22460 that would give D2 her revenge. If D2 is plugged into some kind of Thargoid shared consciousness still then she could very well be the one pulling the strings behind the scenes, staking a claim in HIP 22460 and commanding whatever the Stargoids are to come to her call perhaps. There has been a doomsday cult of Thargoid worshippers active in human space for some time known as the Fargod Cult. They believe the Thargoid vessels are heraldic angels of a deity they call the Fargod who will one day visit and destroy all life. Recently a breakaway sect of the Fargod cultists has emerged calling themselves the True Chapter Sect they are led by an unidentified female figure known only as the First Apostle who they hail as a holy messenger of the Far God. And based aboard the Testament megaship the True Chapter Sect is currently searching for a home system to call its own to accommodate a new wave of converts to their beliefs. In case you're lost in all this tin foiling allow me to just underscore succinctly where I believe all this may be headed. 
Subject D2 is the first apostle. She's either communing directly with the Thargoid upper echelons or is herself controlling Thargoid assets that we know to be mindless drones to serve her own agenda. The incoming Stargoids have either been summoned by D2 or are under her direct control. They will arrive in the currently Thargoid invested systems in the bubble and when they do they will initiate a Proteus field disabling any of the current anti Thargoid weaponry being used in those systems. We will see this process repeated until a new Thargoid territorial power is established in human space with the first apostle as its head. At that point those players that have for so very long expressed the desire to communicate or side with the Thargoids will have a banner under which they can gather and a power that they can support allowing indirect meaningful communication with the Thargoids as a faction. The in game codex speculates that Thargoids are driven purely by the will and impulses of their queen. I would argue that this attack the incoming Stargoids and the recent change in Thargoid behaviour is being coordinated by a queen. But this queen is no Thargoid. But what do you think? Are the Thargoids about to become a new galactic power or are they just fed up with our constant insistence on killing them? Let us know in the comments below. That's it for now. Thanks very much for watching. If you enjoyed this video consider subscribing to the channel and maybe take a look at one of our other videos linked on screen right now.